this is Kyle with the Canova Workshop. Hope you're all doing well today. This is my first video ever. It's going to be one of many to come involving CNC work, CNC router tables, uh, 3D printing, workshop tools, tricks, tool reviews, you name it, it's going to be here. Um, just ordered a Onefinity Woodworker CNC router table. Got a little bit uh, before it gets here, as anybody who's ordered one knows. It's a very nice machine, long lead times, but worth the wait from what I've heard. Excited to get it just because of its price point and the functions that it has, the rigidity that it has. Um, really, really excited to get it here in the shop, start playing with it. Until then, I've got lots of time to play with different um, CAM, CAD software. I just bought the Vetrix VCarve Pro that I've been playing with. It's nice to, to get my head wrapped around that, find out all the little tricks that you can use and how to create vector files and uh, import tool libraries and get that all squared away before it gets here. Um, also, as you can see, I've got uh, one of the Makita RT0701C um, trim routers that uh, is very popular in the industry for the CNC um, router tables. Um, one of the things I'm going to do today is I'm going to check spindle and uh, collet runout. I have a feeling that's not going to be quite what I want um, with the runout. If the, the bit wobbles a little bit, you can uh, increase the size of what you're milling by a little bit. If you're trying to do some high tolerance machining and uh, uh, milling, whatever you're trying to do with it, it can affect, you'll have to uh, undersize because it essentially increases the kerf of the bit. You can either correct that in the uh, in the tool database by increasing the size to accommodate for any runout, but I'd rather not have any runout at all. So I'm going to check it. The only thing is, I don't have a base to mount to the shaft, the the outer case here of the actual router. I do have a dial gauge that I've had for a while. Uh, I had gotten rid of my base, didn't think I would use it, but I'm going to have to make one. So we're going to go through that, see what I can make, see what we can get to, to check it. I've got a um, quarter inch gauge pin. It's a quarter inch minus, so it's uh, 0.0002 below, uh, 0.250 inches, so it'll fit in the collet, won't uh, affect anything. Should be straight, should be true, should not have any uh, issues with run out or constant, uh, what's the name of that? Eccentricity? Yeah, I can't remember. But let's make a, a base to mount that to, and uh, we'll see what it is. How are we going to attach the dial indicator to this? This will start with a piece of wood. We've got to cut a little bit of a V out of it so it will actually sit and locate uh, parallel to the shaft or the housing of the, uh, the router. Once we get that mounted where we can put some sort of a, a clamp around there to hold it in position, then we've got to find a way to mount this so it can come straight down on the center of that gauge pin and we can check the, uh, the runout of the collet and the, the shaft or the spindle. Now that we've uh, made our base, it's going to line up on the actual housing. We've got to create some sort of a standoff to be able to get the dial indicator to mount about like there. So it will be on the gauge pin once we actually get the uh, get it in the collet. We've got our little block with some recesses in it for the hardware. That we can take and mount our dial indicator to it with a quarter twenty machine screw and bolt or not and then uh, we're just going to mount that to the top of this and it'll leave us room for our clamp back here and we should be golden. Ready We've to go. got our, uh, our base with our dial indicator attached to it. And let's uh, mount it to the side of the housing using uh, just a clamp and anything special. I was going to use a, uh, a hose clamp off of my Oneida um, Dust Deputy, which, by the way, if you don't have one of those for your woodworking dust collection, you should get one. They, they are awesome. So impressed with the one I got. But it uh, wasn't, uh, wasn't quite big enough to go around the whole thing. So we'll just use a clamp, clamp it up, and uh, take it All right, me. here we are. I got the, uh, got the dial indicator and the base clamped up on the housing of the router. Uh, we've got the collet itself from the, the Makita router. Um, this isn't like the ER11 style collet where you've got the taper on the whole collet itself to, to locate itself. 
ER11 collets obviously are, are much more accurate than this style. I've seen this style kind of before on uh, some CNC uh, lathes that I've worked on in the past where this little shoulder here locates down below the taper in the spindle and if there's any kind of slop here, it can cause the collet to not quite locate properly. Have a little bit of, uh, can cause a little bit of run out. But when you're doing this, you want to check the collet, especially if it's brand new. Make sure that there's no burrs on the edge here where they've machined in the slots. There's no you know, burrs or anything on the back side here. Same thing on the inside and down in the, the taper and the, the inside of the spindle where this part would locate. Make sure it's nice and clean. There's no uh, built up any kind of cosmoline, protective oil, anything like that. You also want to take your gauge pin, which by the way, uh, I got this one off of Amazon for, uh, it was like five to eight bucks. They're relatively cheap. You can get them a whole set or you can get just the one size that you need. You want to put that in there and make sure, yep, that right there. There's a little bit of a burr on here, which you find sometimes that's catching in the collet. That can cause a run out. Any kind of debris, anything, burrs, anywheres. When you, uh, when you have meeting surfaces, can cause run out. Um, that sits in there nice and smooth. There's, you don't feel anything grabbing. I'll have to eventually take a stone to that side and get rid of that burr that's on that edge right there. I can actually feel it. I can almost catch it on my finger now, but not quite. But uh, let's get this mounted up and we'll see what the run out is. All right, so I've got the gauge pin mounted in the collet. The nut is just snug enough to hold it in position. It's loose enough right now where I can actually adjust the height of the gauge pin to get it so it's right where I want it. Uh, you got to make sure when you do this you've got the gauge pin fully inserted in the collet just to make sure that it protrudes through the back side of where it gets clamped up. Um, one thing that I've noticed right off the bat even though it's clamped up you know I was talking about the back side of that collet where you can have a little bit of slop and play and it can cause run out. Right now I've got the gauge zeroed out. If I push on the pin one way I can deflect it quite a bit, but it doesn't come back to zero. And if I pull it back the other way, it does the same thing. That's that little bit of slop on that back side where it's not quite a 100% tight, you know, like slip fit. Um, but, you know, a cheap trim router like this, you wouldn't expect to have that tight of a tolerance on the back side of the collet. But uh, if you were doing a high precision machining or inlays, anything like that, where you want really, really tight tolerances, that much can cause variability every time you mount a bit in your collet inside your router spindle. So one thing that we can do is just kind of give it a little bit of a slot back and forth to try to get it to center itself. We'll, uh, we'll tighten it up and then we'll rotate it see what the see what the run out is. Get it nice and snug. Looks like we are zeroed up. Just give it a gentle spin and that's not terrible it's about what i expected out of this and again we're not talking about high dollar precision bearings and you know cnc quality like big you know commercial cnc quality stuff so if we get it to there that's about three thousandths run out which isn't terrible but if you take three thousandths run out it's going to increase the size of the curve by one and a half thou. So I've taken the gauge pin and loosened the collet up, remounted it a couple times, tried different things just to see what I could get for kind of a, an average. This is the, the best result that I could get with this, which is, I'm actually surprised that it's pretty good. Um, we've got about plus or minus, eh, it's not even quite a thousandth actually. It's just under plus or minus one thou of run out. Um, so that's that's pretty good. I have gone ahead and ordered a uh, precision collet. It uh, hasn't quite come in yet, but uh, we'll check that once it gets here, see if it tightens up a little bit more. Um, again, this is not precision CNC spindle stuff. Um, this will be plenty good enough for anybody who wants to use one of these on their, their CNC router table for woodworking and even metalworking, really. On that. At least we have a baseline that we know what our runout is with that collet in this router with these bearings, um, which could would be useful in the future if we're trying to diagnose any issues with uh, cut tolerance and, uh, and widths of what we're trying to cut. 
um, especially if we're trying to diagnose any issues that may be related to the, the spindle and the bearings to, to discern if it's time to replace it, the bearings are worn and whatnot, uh, or if you have an issue with our collet or our bits where we got something kind of dinged up, there's a burr that's causing uh, unexpected outcomes in our cuts. But, uh, yeah, at least it's a baseline. We know where we are. I have to make a, a slight correction. Um, in the beginning, when I first started measuring how I had the, uh, the, the zero to three thousandths run out on the gauge pin, um, that's actually, it's okay, but it's a lot more than I expected because after I thought about it, when the bit cuts, because it's cutting in a circle, if it's zero to three thousandths, it's gonna cut three thousandths one way and three thousandths the other way. So instead of, if you have a, a quarter inch end mill, Instead of it just cutting a uh, 0.25 slot when it cuts, it's going to cut oversized three thousandths one way and oversized three thousandths the other way every time it makes a revolution. So if you're only worried about you know cutting on an edge, it's only going to increase your cut by three thousandths on the one side. But if you're trying to make an exact uh, you know 0.25 data or anything with your with your CNC uh, router table, that could uh, increase the total width by six thousandths, which could create more slop than you may want. Um, I've already went ahead, because this is about the, the, uh, the results I expected, I went ahead and ordered a uh, precision collet from Elaricorp, which is supposed to be in later this week, so I'll do a follow-up video to this with that collet, just to, to do a product review on that, to see if I get any different results. Um, I'm assuming they probably have a little bit tighter machining tolerance on that collar on the back side, um, but we'll see. But hope you enjoyed the video. Um, please let me know any questions, comments you may have. Um, and again, this is my first video, so hope you enjoyed it. Hope it was informational, and uh, we'll see you again soon for another one. Thanks.